guys, we're going to start really quickly this time, just like we did last time, because <laughs> as always, Vincent gets in the room and then he starts spitting heat and we want to not like waste a drop of this. <laughs> so we were talking about crystals and then I was like, pause, 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 record. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, we were. Vincent's we're going to pick that again, right back up. Vincent oh, but, Woo! I, I guess so. <laughs> wow. Wow. My wife doesn't even respond that way when I come into the room. <laughs> Jeez, I'm telling you. No, it's so exciting. What I was saying just before we started is in this room, the energy is so unbelievable that my soul just wants to leave and float all over the place here. And I've not done any joints, no gummies, no nothing. And I feel that way. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you guys get used to it. Mm -hmm. But then when we come back into it, you need to bottle it. And you know what? You can make some real money on this. <laughs> all right. Bottling the energy. Tours? No, you don't need to bottle. But just bring people in or tours. You get 10 minutes in here for $100. <laughs> Okay, and I like and that you margin, can, right? And you can leave and take the energy with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 let it last for a week or so. I mean, <laughs> damn, I think that that's a great monetization here. The whole room, that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Tour the studio, I this little ten foot room, yeah, it's right. a tiny little it's room, a guest like, bedroom in an apartment. Sit. <laughs> Paying a hundred dollars to step into someone's apartment <laughs> with all this it, equipment. That's it. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Don't whatever you do. Don't have anybody clear out this room. This is the energy here is is fabulous. Thank you. Thank even you. Alex contributes to it. So even <laughs> Alex. Even <laughs> his even. energy. It's the energy. No, seriously, the energy of you guys are unbelievable. And and one of the reasons why I'm excited to be back here is because of you guys. Because oh. you you reach and and I hope you realize you are reaching all over the fucking globe. Do you understand that? <laughs> Seoul, Korea. I've got clients calling me from Seoul, Korea, who got my name from listening to Bledsoe Said So. Wow. From wow. Russia. Russia, that's right that. in the middle of all this crap that's going on over there, which is not have anything to do with the people. Right. And they're listening. And over in the Ukraine, I've got them calling me. Wow. I had, of course, Australia. That was a long time ago. Um, where are uh, so, some you said other Japan. Places. Japan. Japan was another one, as well as China, South Africa. Wow. So, I mean, you are extending everywhere. And that just goes to prove one thing. There is no such thing as isolation. You are not isolated to this little room here in Wilmington. It, it appears that way. It does. Right? It appears that way. But the energy is getting out there because you got to wonder... What makes a person come and want to listen to you? What draws them? I still don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it fucking certainly isn't looks. I mean, it's just, uh, no, 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 I'm joking. No. If it was for looks, we would just have Alex on the camera all the time. And Vincent. And Vincent, yes, yes. We would. Oh, forget Vincent. Hey, Vincent, I, I got an idea. Yeah. Okay, I know, really, all right. You two will be the host. And I can play your grandfather at this point. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, at 60. 68 years old here. I'm getting older, my the, God. You are not 68. So, yes, I am 68 Get the years old. Fuck the he's, he's one of us. Get the I fuck out of here. Yes, your, your body is 68. The body, oh, definitely, it is 68. But it's, doesn't look it's you, definitely 68. The attitude is still 17, 16 years old. <laughs> Let's go. Mind. It is. I'm a child at heart, and uh, like I said, my wife is telling me that all the time. You child, you fucking little <laughs> Grow up. But um, you know what? That's like no what Jesus won't. said. Unless you become like one of these, you'll never enter the kingdom. That, you know? Yeah, totally. Oh. Exactly. It's and it's like, I want to be Peter Pan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm in this room flying, so I've got <laughs> that going for me. We can do a whole Disney episode in oh, here. Oh, yeah. yeah we talked quite a bit about Disney Ooh. last time. It's a strong, potent energy having like that, that childlike wonder, that childlike that 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 energy is just so i think it might be one of the most pure strong most concentrated you know it's just like um you, i don't i'm not sure if you you heard but recently we had some crazy experiences yeah crazy yeah. sightings uh and my whole family was there really like, oh yeah my there's like 20 of us out there together my 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 parents oh my, my siblings and their children and everyone was there and one of the things that chris senior said was um, to my niece and nephew, uh, and and your nephew as well. These are magnets. He said these kids, these kids are magnets for this phenomenon. 
They are yes. magnets. It's it's that it's that purity and that concentrated spirit. I, I don't I don't know what it is. I guess they haven't been bogged down by all the Oh, it's totally that. It's totally that. And that part inside of you is the closest to your soul that has not been bogged down. Closest to the incarnation and, and the in in between space. You know, the in between incarnations. When you're on the other side there and you come here, that child part of you is still bringing that memory with you. It's not until you get older that the mental filtration system turns the memories off. Right. Um, but that's intentional also. Mm -hmm. It's intentional. But you can never forget that child inside. Now, here's where the problem is, and that's why I wrote the book, is very important point about that child inside. That's the part that gets damaged the most. Mm. Quickly, and what's first. the name of your book for the listener? The Secret That's Holding You Back, okay. right? And yes. it's all about um, how our brain winds up creating defense mechanisms to shield and protect us from those original beliefs that are formed from when we're a child, mm. from the messages we receive from the environment. So, so before we receive those negative messages, we're the purest and we're the strongest. Right. And children are very psychic. Oh, yeah. Very psychic. Big they time. know. It's it's like you really need to bring a dog and a child <laughs> wherever you go and then just ask them both, How, do you like this guy over here? Do you, <laughs> do you like this guy? Do you think he's nice? And they'll give you the true answer. If you hear the dog growling or the kid is hiding behind you, then just leave because that's an asshole you're standing in front of. <laughs> I am telling you that's great. I, I, I told women to do that when they were going on their first dates. Oh, my God. Bring, bring a, child a, dog, and a dog. Bring a child and a dog and let's see how they respond. <laughs> and don't waste your fucking time with a loser. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll let you know right away, you know, the tail's wagging yeah. or yeah. it's growling, just leave. That's it. That's but awesome. But you're absolutely right about the children and they are magnets. Oh, yeah. That, and the psychic thing, too. Like um, Jonah, my 10-year-old nephew, was he would, uh, after Chris Sr. started telling him, like, you know, these are what these things are and these are how they respond and all this stuff, Jonah would start just, like, pointing and we would see a flash where he would point. Wow. He just, it was like he just... Well, dad, remember, Dad said, "Focus your thoughts, uh, you know, toward towards a spot and watch and see if yeah, it appears." Yeah, he started and just the second he pointing. Did it and it, it flashed. flashed at him. It's like it's like there's no. They don't have that that the doubt, doubt barrier. The doubt, yeah. the, no exactly. Doubts. The doubt, the doubt, no doubt, no filtration system at all. Yeah. So that's why the energy is pure. Yeah. And it is more focused, you know, as a child. Now the brain isn't necessarily developed enough to understand what's happening. Right. And that's actually a good part too, because it's the thinking part of the brain that gets us in trouble and oh, yeah. starts creating that filtration system. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's 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 like. Critical thinking sometimes can be the antithesis of your intuition. Like it, it, it could actually be the opposite. If you think too much and yes. you try to logically rationalize Absolutely. what you're seeing, it's like, no, just follow your intuition. The kid, a kid doesn't have that like hardcore no, critical they thinking. They're they seeing it and they believe it. They see it, they feel it, they believe it, and, and well, that's that. You are also saying something that I've been trying to teach the world. There is no such thing as the fear of the unknown. Okay. Ooh. You would never fear something you don't know about, which is why children can be so accepting of that. It's not until they're taught that something like that could harm them. Oh. Why do you think children will just walk right in the middle of the street? Right. Yeah. Because they don't know that they can get hit by a car. So if they feared Same with the animals. unknown... They wouldn't walk in the middle of the street. It's not until they're taught. It's not until you see other people having these bad experiences. So it's always the fear of the known of what you think can happen. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. Always like, about the, that. The animals. Why they, do they keep doing it? They don't know. Exactly. They, they don't know. And I think you're on to something there with the, it's almost like the less you know, the more spiritually potent That's you are. right. Why do you think they say ignorance is bliss? There you go. God, man. From a reason. Well, we I mean, I mean, we, we could go on for this forever, like Solomon in the Bible. There's a quote in the book of Solomon. It's like the, the knowledge brings, uh, what is it? Is it misery? Is it like the story goes, he yes. went crazy because he had all this esoteric right, knowledge. Right, had too much, too much information, too much which is it, really him interesting. Um, there is a book out called The Flowers for Algernon. 
It's a I've heard of fabulous. That. Yep, I read it. Right, you, did. you read it, uh-huh. right? And I yeah, think we awesome. talked about it the last time too that I was here, and they made a movie out of it. I thought so. Right, and the whole story was about a very ignorant man. He had some, you know, mental pathologies going on mm. um, and disabilities, so he, he he wasn't really aware of everything that was real and what was going on. Mm. And he was such a nice guy, <laughs> and everybody was making fun of him, though. Uh. You know, because but he was laughing. And smiling because he didn't know that they were making fun of him. That's right? exactly. That what sounds you're like saying. a great movie. Yeah. It is, and and then it, it turned out that there was a doctor who was able to do a brain surgery to reverse the process and turn him into somebody incredibly smart. Uh, All right. The problem was with this surgery, they didn't know how smart it could make him, and then eventually it might reverse, mm. but reverse and become even worse. Ooh. Ooh. So he agreed. A nurse started talking with him, and as best she could, got him to agree to go along with the surgery. He went along with the surgery, and he started to become really intelligent. In the process of becoming really intelligent, he now understood love. And he started falling in love with this nurse. He also started to understand that everybody was making fun of him. So mm. it started hurting. Oh. Mm. All right. He started the knowledge to hurt. brought the suffering. Right. And then he became smarter and smarter and smarter. Um, and then all of a sudden, at some point, it reverses and he is going backwards. And now the nurse that falls in love with him, she's so sad because it's going backwards. And the mm. most important thing he winds up saying before he goes off and then winds up dying is it. If I didn't go through this process, I would have never experienced love. Oh. And I would have never experienced what it was to love you. So it's the I, human I, experience. I, I was, was about exactly, to say it. Yeah. It, was, it was okay. And Voltaire actually opposed that. It was a philosopher. Yeah. But he was a cynic philosopher from way back when. Very cynical. Oh, totally. He posed the philosophy and the, and the argument that, well, the debate, he put it up for debate. Would you rather be completely ignorant, mm. right? And totally unhappy, okay, or happy, sorry, and totally happy, mm. or absolutely brilliant and totally unhappy. Which would you rather be? See, to me, it's like that's not even a question. Like, I just want to, I would much rather be happy, you, you know, like I would much rather be ignorant and happy because See, I would rather have the knowledge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Uh, exactly, and this is what the students were arguing back and forth, except for me. Oh, really? Yes, this is where I understood that I'm more intelligent than most people. You know, that just <laughs> really is just like, no, I'm, I'm joking about that. But you don't argue the question at all, because it's a fake question. It's a fallacy question. Mm. If you were completely ignorant, you wouldn't know that you were happy. Mm. So you would have no idea what you were feeling. You'd also be defenseless. Right. You know? Totally. Yeah. Defenseless to, to dealing with the suffering and... And all of that. So you, would, you wouldn't know. You just wouldn't know. And if you were completely intelligent, you would know how to make yourself happy. Mm. So it's a completely fallacied question, and everybody is arguing, no, just like you said, oh, I'd rather have all the intelligence and suffer. I don't care. I want the intelligence. I'm like, oh, my God, yes. And this is why people are miserable, mm. because they're thinking those are the only two choices. Yeah. And the third choice is not to answer the question at all, because it's a ridiculous question. It's a conundrum. Yes, yeah. it is, totally. Did you ever see War Games? No. The movie? Uh-uh. Oh, my God, it's fabulous. This is why Matthew. I love having him on, because he's like, oh, he does what we do. He, he talks about movies. movies. Yes. Matthew Broderick, as a kid, was in it. He was absolutely fabulous. And it was about a military computer that becomes so smart, but he hacks into it with his friends, and he starts playing the game that they had on there called War Games. Oh. But mm. the computer doesn't know it's a game. And the computer is in charge of all the warheads and the nuclear warheads oh, for the military. I love that kind of stuff. So they're playing war games, and it turns out that the computer is going to launch as soon as he gets the codes. It's going to launch the, the missiles because that's how far they got in the actual game. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know he was playing a game. Ooh. Well, the developer, they get the developer of it. It's a long story. You got to watch it, really. It's a I fabulous game. To. Eventually, Matthew Broderick, as a kid, gets the computer to play tic-tac-toe. 
okay? So he plays tic-tac-toe and realizes there really is no way of winning the game tic-tac-toe. Mm. If you're playing it right, you cannot win. So the computer then stops playing tic-tac-toes and goes through the whole scenario of war games. And he's shoot firing missiles and realizing, well, Russia's going to fire missiles. This country, whichever goes first, it doesn't matter. It ends the same uh. way. You see the, the, the screen's going crazy, lighting up all over the place because the computer is learning like AI. It's Whoa. learning. And it learns at the end that it's a ridiculous game and the only way to win the game is to not play to it. To stop at all. playing it. Wow. Yeah. Not play it at all. Wow. So it's the same thing as Voltaire. You know, we're going through all of these debates and these arguments, even about spirituality uh -huh. and about metaphysics. And the whole thing is, is that you will find more peace by not arguing it and Absolutely. getting it into that that way at all. Just stop trying to answer the question, is there a God? Isn't there a God? Mm. Stop trying to answer the question and just live and you'll find out the answer that way. You know, rather than just sitting there and debating it. I mean, how, how long has that debate been going on? Oh, yeah. for, forever. forever. And, yes, and I, I, forever. I firmly believe in what you're saying. Like, I, you know, I, I can speak to someone who believes anything and I'm never like, well, how about, uh, I, I, you don't challenge them. You don't, right. none of that. It's just like, oh, wow. Like, I'm, okay. I look at it like I could, I could get a nugget out of this that I could learn something new. Even if it's something small, I can learn something new and, and like incorporate it into my own life somehow. But like, there's, there's truth to it all. And there's you exactly know, there's, at the it, end, it's our interpretation. At the end of yes. the day, they've lived a perspective that you never have. Exactly, and you're exactly. going to learn from what they've seen. Who am I to invalidate that by arguing it? Y you know, no, see, 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 this is the reason why I like coming here. And Alex, I know you behind the board over there as a producer. It's just like. <laughs> You get intelligent conversations here. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. I don't have to go to a university. I don't have to talk to a doctor or anybody yeah, like just, that. I can come here. You just have to pay $100 and, to come and do the that's tour. Right. And then you get to talk to. You need to monetize this, damn it. I mean, have people come in. I'm telling you, this is unbelievable here. I'm on such a fucking high, okay? This is, this is better than sex. I mean, I'm telling you. Sex takes hey. work. Um, yeah, this is easy. He this said it. Easy. Easy, easy. <laughs> oh God, my wife Eileen, don't watch this. Okay, That's my wife. I think it's because he's within five feet of me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Calm down, Alex. Relax. Uh, Calm yourself down. I love. Hey, look. If I can make him excited, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I make anybody excited, I'm thrilled these days. I'm 68 fucking years old. You know what? This <laughs> I got to tell you, this is really funny. It has nothing to do with nothing out there. And Great. it's not spiritual awesome. or metaphysical at all. Perfect. It's is, is like Eileen is always telling me, will you close the blinds at night? Everybody is looking in. And my theory is, I'm 68 years old. If you want to look at my naked body, <laughs> I'm thrilled. Yeah, okay, I am ahead. flattered to go. death. I don't give a go shit. right ahead. 90 years old, 20 years old, you just <laughs> go ahead and look. And if you're not throwing up or laughing, I'm fine with that. That's much better. So <laughs> oh I am, God. yes, you want to look, oh, go ahead. You're ecstatic about it. I oh, am. my God. That's, that's so funny, Like, dude. that's very spiritual, by the way. That was yeah, from uh, my honestly, evolvement. That was, that was profound, honestly. That's a <laughs> spiritual lesson I think I'll well, take with for a long time. Well, I don't feel shame anymore. I don't need a fig leaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need even need a grape leaf. They're just... <laughs> Maybe a leaf of a cherry. I don't, at this point, at 68, that's all I probably need. Um, oh, my God. But, yeah, no, this is like, yeah, life has a way of torture. You know, women don't have to worry about getting back at men. Because life will do that and age will do that. Oh. <laughs> okay? We don't need Destroys a Lorena Bobbitt around slicing off penises or anything <laughs> like that. Life will do that. I promise you guys are young. Enjoy it while you see it. Or, and just uh, enjoy it because it will disappear. Or, or. I, I, I can only comprehend what you're saying, but I believe it. You know, totally. It just goes it's so fast. You have to stay I'm, present right now. so unfair. I have a question about something we were talking about right before. I wish we had got it at the beginning. Okay, go ahead. Something we were talking about right before we started was kind of like the the balance between we were talking about our work lives and you know how we all just got to get through the mundane daily, you know, we got to do what we got to do to to pay the bills, but ultimately the best thing is to prioritize like your happiness, your your mental well-being, that yes. you know, your spiritual state of mind. 
and that kind of stuff. You were you were sharing something that was really profound, which is that you kind of you kind of use the universe as like a, almost it sounded like a safety blanket or like a, a uh what what do they call it like a parachute like a parachute okay you know you, you're you're focusing on the thing that you really want to do in life, but then sometimes you got to pay the bills, you got to go do something else or whatever. And the way that you do that is by like projecting your wants or your intentions to the universe and knowing that it'll provide for you yes is that something that you have been like actively practicing for for quite a while like like putting your intentions out or your wants out to the universe actively is that something you've been doing a it's, while uh, I, absolutely a ever since i got onto this road and this pathway of spirituality and metaphysics, I come to understand the law of attraction and that and how it works. That's the most important part that we all need to learn is how do you get to use this force that's out there? George Lucas called it the force yeah. in Star Wars, but it's exactly the exact same thing that we're all tapped into. So everybody is creating and manifesting 24-7, whether you know it or whether you don't know it. And you're either manifesting what you want or what you don't want. So if you learn how to truly use it and we call it the universe we can call it all different oh, yeah. things but it really is a force and a power that just is out there an energy shall we say yeah the energy does not think for itself at all mm. so we think that it's god doing it or the angels doing it and actually it's not and they're looking at us going what is this Meshuggah going to get it or not? It's just like you tapped into this energy. So you have to learn how to manipulate it and use it, and you can learn that. And what we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. there are so many people that have bread and butter jobs. Yeah. Right? Because we need that. We created yeah. in our society the need to make money because we have expenses. We mm -hmm. have to pay for a home, either taxes. Through rent or a mortgage. Taxes. There, You can go to some different countries and live in any different way that their policies, you know, demand. Sure. Um, but it's still going. You're still going to have things that you're going to need money for food, oh, yeah. whatever it is, right? Okay. So how do you then balance going after a dream that seems like it may not produce a lot of money? I mean, how many kids that are growing up have dreams and their parents turning around and say, well, that's not practical. Yeah. Well, honestly, that's the exact reason that I thought it would be good for us to go deep Into on that. this right now on the show is because, I mean, I was that kid for such a long time and it just kind of finally clicked that like, Oh no! You got to prioritize your dream. Get a first. real job, right? Get like, a yeah. real forget, job. Forget That's right. That. My my parents used to say, "Well, my mother was the one who used to say, settle down.'" Because mm -hmm. I was, I went into professional acting from when I was a kid and performing. Right. I, that's all I wanted to do. But of course, there's there's times that you're working and times that you're not, mm. right? So always, my mother was always, well, I'm just looking forward to the time that you settle down. This is like, what are you talking about? I am settled down. I'm settled into the fact that I want to be an actor. Yeah. And I've got to do what I need to do in order to get that done. Absolutely. Well, so many people will try to do that, but then they'll give up. And mm -hmm. they'll just get their bread and butter job. Uh, this is what I have to accept. And they get, and you get caught up in that. You're making a salary, mm -hmm. all right? You're making get benefits. And especially today, we need the benefits. Oh, yeah. Because those are really expensive, oh, yeah. right? And so you're staying in that. But meanwhile, you're becoming miserable and miserable each day. Mm -hmm. and, and you lose the, the oh, God, the, the joy of going to work. It's now become, you know, total, it's work to get ready for work. It's dreadful. Right? Yeah. And yeah. totally dreadful. It's hard and to get out of is, bed sometimes. It is, right. And, you don't, and, and so many people don't want to do that, but they force themselves mm -hmm. to do that. They look forward to retirement. And I find it interesting that within the word retire is the word tire. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that means you're, what you're doing is you're leaving what you're tired of doing. Mm. Wow. Okay. And most because people that aren't tired of doing it don't retire. Yeah, they just they they just keep going. Do it forever. Yeah, I will be working forever because I love my work. So why would I want to retire from it? That's Jenny's beautiful. great grandfather worked until he was eighty five, and wow. they basic they Good had to him. they had to say you can't work anymore. <laughs> True story. Right. They told him right. it, it was like a factory. Oh, gotcha. You know, so but, he just. But I loved bet you it. he enjoyed what he was doing, yes. and and it kept him. It also kept him younger and living that long. Mm -hmm. He, he right? lived to ninety five. He he had wow. ten more years after he retired at eighty five. Wow. You know, yes. it's like, 
More Crazy. people die after they retire, and it's not just because of the age; it's because they decay. The mind because there's nothing else to do. Their mind no is shutting anymore. down. It, right, the, exactly. Body and motion. Yeah, they've made totally, the, the, totally, the, or they've tricked themselves into thinking that their purpose is their job. Yeah, and so when they don't have it anymore, they're like, "What do I have to?" Well, live they're for? over. Well, it, it, let me tell you something. It's not that they tricked themselves into doing it; they actually convinced themselves that mm. this is who they are. It defines them. So people yeah. have got their jobs, not their dreams, defining them. Yeah. So what we were talking about is, okay, learn how to use this power, this force out there. So if you have a bread and butter job and you do have a dream and you want to pursue your dream, don't give up your dream. Never. Just keep going towards it, understanding that you can make your dream profitable and abundant because mm -hmm. we are promised abundance. Now, here, here's what's really interesting. Going after your dream has more of a chance of you becoming abundant and financially secure versus going after what's financially secure and thinking that's going to make you happy. You have wow. less of a chance of being happy going after what just the money Mm -hmm. than you do going after the dream. You're going after the dream and happiness, that will bring along the abundance. Going after the, uh, the money alone will not bring, will the happiness. Not bring along that. It's not guaranteed to bring along wow. that happiness. It makes perfect sense. Well, of course it, of course truly it makes does. Sense. Because yeah. you're, you're creating when you're happy. Yeah. All right? And you're believing in yourself when you're following your dream. You've got something to believe in. You're taking a risk. Yes, ab and, absolutely. And I you need believe, to take a risk. You know, nature rewards courage. It's like Terrence McKenna said. Well, that's the reason why it rewards it because you're taking a self loving step. Yeah. I love doing this. Damn. Therefore, I'm going after it. And so that increases your energy. This is one of the reasons why we're down here and incarnated in this physical world is to discover who you are and mm -hmm. what your abilities are as a spiritual being as well as a physical being. So if we are capable of manifesting, Manifesting, the more you manifest in your life, the more you're discovering, hey, wait a minute, I'm more than just this physical being. This mm. is really cool. I'm a powerful, divine, magnificent being here. Yeah. And I got to tell you some stories of manifesting that, that just recently happened to oh, me. Oh, I'd Let's, love I'm, to hear I'm that. all ears. But love definitely, I, I, I'll get to that. But the point is, you can actually tell the universe, all right, listen, I'm in this bread and butter job, or bring me this bread and butter job mm. that is going to be flexible, that'll give me enough money to live comfortably. I don't want to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel oh, in order yeah. to live because then I won't be able to pursue my dream exactly uh, at all. Make it flexible. Make it enjoyable for me. Use my talents, but let that happen while I'm pursuing what I'm really, what my purpose really is here, what my dream really is. I'm going to pursue this. Mm. So make this work out without interfering in this. Now what you're doing is you're focusing your energy into different ways. You're giving part of the energy is here. You're going to make this work. But now you're directing all the other energy into here, and you're going to make this work too. Mm. And because we're unlimited, we're able to do that. But if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I can't. I don't have time. I I've got, I've been doing, what, thousands of readings now at this point? Um, you wow. know, over 40 years of experience and been doing this for 40 years. It's amazing. And the majority of people that I work with, they'll tell me, oh, I, I can't pursue my dreams because I, I spend too much time on my job. I, have, I work 14 hours a day. Um, I have to do this. I don't have time to go after my dream. It's not practical to go after my dream. Mm -hmm. There's no money in my dream. Mm -hmm. And you know what the pandemic did? And it, it caused people who lost their jobs to now have time. Yes. And yes. they started going after their dreams. And there were more people who went after their entrepreneurial ideas. Oh, yeah. And it becomes successful. It was an explosion of like totally. small businesses and entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Yeah, it was an explosion. Because their souls were telling them ahead of time, no, man, you're not supposed, like you, for example. I use you, for example. You were doing your job. You were telling me about the work that you were doing. Yeah, You yeah. were doing your job, and you weren't happy at the job you were doing. Oh, no. You were getting upset about it, having to stay at home. Depressed. And crashing. Oh, yeah. Your soul was telling you, but you see, you didn't take the steps that your soul was telling you. When you get messages like that, I'm unhappy. Mm. I don't like what I'm doing. That's your soul also going, it's time to get out. Go go, mm -hmm. take a risk, take a chance, go do something else. Yeah. And if you don't, 
your soul will wait and also conspire with the rest of the universe to help you get out. Well, that happened. I mean, yeah. that, that I just, I just suddenly lost my job. Right. So suddenly. Oh, it wasn't that sudden. There was right. a whole plan. Right. But the funny thing is- <laughs> Your soul was planning that. You know, I would expect that if something like that would happen, the the immediate feeling would be like, you know, horrible terror. Like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Whatever. I was relieved. I was, you will feel relieved. I was relieved. I called him that day when he texted me. I was at dinner with my wife and some of her coworkers. And he texted me and I was like, excuse me. And I walked outside and I called him and I was like, just want to make sure you're okay. He was like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I was like, you sure? Wow. Absolutely. You're sure. Yeah. And that's the truth of it. And then what happens? You wind up getting something else that right now. Mm -hmm. And this right now could be temporary too oh, while yeah. you're transitioning into discovering no your doubt. soul's purpose. The, the way that I tend to look at it is what we do here with the podcast, what we do making music. You know, I'm I'm producing an album for Emily. I'm helping a lot of other people make Absolutely. their music. That's my dream. Like I, being creative. That's my dream. And making that turn into mm -hmm. a financial success for you so you can continue to pursue that. Absolutely. That That's the goal that I know that I am headed towards. I, I know I'm moving in that direction. I know we as a team are it's, moving in that direction. And so the bread and butter job to pay the bills, I don't really care. Okay. As long as it doesn't drive me All crazy. Right, now or, I'm going to put the two of you on the spot. Alex, do I have permission to... to <laughs> Rip these guys apart. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Here's what I'm going to do, because I was listening to the both of you talk about your jobs, and you both limited yourselves without you even realizing that you were limiting yourself. How so? Okay? Like, this whole thing of monetization and getting this to work, you said depends on something. What does it depend I, on? I don't remember. Oh, people listening. That's right. It depends on numbers, right? Mm. You gave away your power. It doesn't depend on the numbers. It depends on you. It depends on your belief in this. Now, here's what's really interesting. The higher the bar that we want, the higher the dream that we want, the harder it is to believe in it. Mm. Yeah. Okay? So, so you're thinking then, and, and it's automatic, this is natural, that, well, the only way that this is really going to happen yeah, we got to bring in that power. We got to bring in those listeners, man. Mm. We got we got to work our asses off mm -hmm. in order to make this happen. No, you fucking don't. <laughs> it's just like you don't understand how easy this is. You got to believe You're your ass off. Oh, that's right. You've got <laughs> to believe your ass off. You've got even in your job. You were talking about your job. And you were saying that your success at your job is based on what this other company does. Mm. You see, now it's so easy to get caught up in the world beliefs and in the societal beliefs, right? It's like what you see with your eyes. Oh, that's got to change. No, it doesn't. You can change that instantaneously. You can change it. And, and we have an influence over even others and the way they respond and the way they react oh, yeah. based on our beliefs. But we do get caught up in the natural practicalities of life, shall we call it, yeah. rather than just saying, no, no, all of that is going to be determined by how strong I can believe in who I am, my work, my influence mm. over everything. You can change that position just like that, just that all of a sudden you go to work and now, oh, wait, your company is calling and saying, Ryan, we don't need you to do that anymore. You got great job. You got great people that you've been that you've got policies with. We're going to shift you over here that has even better policies that you're going to get. So let's do that today. And you're going, how the hell did that fucking happen? <laughs> and it's because you believed that it was going to happen. And the same thing with this, with, with Bledsoe said so. All right? How do we get this monetized to the point that this is our job, this is our work, this is our passion, we love it so much, we're reaching so many people, is your belief in it without even second thoughts. Second thought. I mean, did you think, and let me ask you this, when you first started, do you think it was going to pick up as quickly as it picked up? No. A part of me, and I'm being 100% candid. Yes. A part of me has always known that someday it will spread around the world. Mm. But right. I'm always shocked when I see the signs that it's actually happening. Yeah. It's you, you shocking. What I'm okay. saying? Totally. The soul inside of you was telling you the direction you were meant to go in. That's why I'm doing my work. I know that. 
<laughs> but the human inside of you is still is shocked. What became shocked. Yeah. Which is why I will turn around and when I get a phone call from Seoul, Korea, that I get off, I'm like, honey, you're not going to believe this. I just had a fucking call from Seoul, Korea. <laughs> I reached Seoul, Korea. That's unbelievable. I'm like, why? Why am I so surprised over that? Why would you be surprised if you believed what your soul was telling you? Why would you be so surprised that it did work? The, the surprise is to let you know you still have more work to do in your belief systems. Uh, See, I, my problem, I believe, and you can illuminate this for me, hopefully. I mean, I there's certainly need it. But um, my problem is I have 100% belief in what we're doing in the mission, but the lack of belief is within myself. Uh, for for me. Only, it is always that. It's always that because, you know, okay, what made successful spiritual leaders? And I, I, now— Let's go all the way back. Let's go back 2,023 years, all right? There was a man walking around, and he was 33 years old, and all of a sudden, he was awakened to his mission. We're talking about Jesus mm -hmm. now, right? <laughs> okay. So he was awakened to his mission, but before he started his mission, he went to wander through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. Why the fuck did he need to walk through the desert 40 days and 40 nights for? Yeah. Us? If he was Jesus, the Christ, mm -hmm. right? Why? Because the moment his passion came out and he knew his purpose, it scared the shit out of him. Ooh. And the devil, the three temptations were his own inner demons he had to face and his doubts about himself and the power. What do you mean I'm going to reach the world? Listen to what you just said. He was thinking, you mean my teachings are going to reach the world? And you just said that. You mean what I'm doing over here is going to reach the world? So you had the exact same fears that Jesus had. The difference between you and him is he faced his in a short period of time because he knew I got to get this going mm. because I also have the feeling I'm not going to be around here. <laughs> You've got more time than that, but you got to get your shit together too and face your demons because why couldn't you be as good as the Jesuses, the Martin Luther King Juniors, the Gandhis, all the, all the Nelson Mandela's, the world leaders that change the beliefs of people. Why can't you be two of those at the same time? Why do you see yourself any different? Is because we wind up looking at those people as up here and us down here. Mm. When you're their brothers, yeah. right. you're over here. They just had more experience and knowledge than you do at the time that didn't make them better. I think the beauty in this message is we all can That's awaken right. Christ consciousness. Yeah. That is the He's not whole the only one who will ever do of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. He faced his fears because he was a normal man, just like you are feeling just right now, and so are you, and the same with me. But we have a mission here because what inspired you to do this show is the fact that you are meant to change the world. If you weren't you wouldn't even have the followers that you have right now, and the message wouldn't have gone as far as Seoul, Korea, Russia, the Ukraine, Australia. It would never have gone out there. People would not be bothered by it. They would have turned it off a long time ago. But the, the, the evidence is in it getting out there. Now, how far it gets out there and how many people it reaches is completely based on you mm. because you're putting the power in, the, in it reaching others. And that you're good enough. Nobody else, none of your guests, not even me coming here, even though, you know, I'm fucking good. I really. <laughs> yeah, see, Alex, Alex, even though I'm fucking good. good. Like, that was, that was supreme you confidence. Like, that? like, well, I have to, I'm the only one who's saying that about me. I don't get that at home. Oh, no, we say that about you too. No, oh, trust well, me. Good. This and Jenna you. is fucking good. I'm saying it right here, yeah, right but now. I don't go to bed with you guys, okay? I'm, <laughs> uh, again, just my wife, if that happens, and, you know, after being with her. Do you know that tomorrow is our 45th anniversary? Well, actually, Whoa! July 9th. Nice. Nice. That's yeah, tomorrow, right? 45th anniversary. July, yeah, July 9th. Tomorrow. Today we're recording. Ooh, congratulations. Five years. Congratulations. I know, really, really, and madly in love, too. Ooh, my Wait, gosh, my parents yeah. just had their 45th anniversary, I think. Did wow. You all get married in 83? I oh could. my gosh, I was just looking, I just wished them a happy anniversary, and I was, I'm wondering what it was, either 44 or 45, but you're right, I think it was 45. Yeah, well, yeah they were married in 83. a lot of common. June of 1983. got a lot in common. That's no, so No, to be, to be serious and, to, and to, to go back, move to sacredness here, um, the idea that 
we are not seeing ourselves as glorified as these beings. How do you ever get to prove that you're divine and godlike if we can't start tapping into that right. and understanding we are? Because the problem is not that we believe that. The problem is that we don't, don't. believe that. Yeah. Right. That's right. a fantastic okay? point. A person who acts like God is not believing that he is like God. Mm. Because if he was, they would be bringing us together. They would be loving. They would be caring. They would be sharing. They mm. would be... Uh, all, have all the compassion in the world. That's exactly what these spiritual leaders try to teach us and to remind us that we are like that because we were created in its image, right? What does that mean? It's, we have the same capacity. Right. And it's the lack of, of realizing that. It's the separation from that that makes us act the way we are acting today. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's so easy sometimes to like slip into the, the doubt. Right. Like you hear it everywhere, especially us doing the show. We have, you know, guests like the the fucking amazing Vincent Jenna here and articulate and and, and, and some others that say, believe, 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 believe. Belief is the key. Belief is how you manifest. Belief is how you get what you want. Totally. And it's like when I hear it, when I talk about it, it resonates. I feel it is so true. And then it's like in practice, in the day to day. It's so easy to forget. Oh, it it's totally so easy is. to slip. Totally it's a constant battle to. St- it, it, I, I'm I'm realizing more than ever that it's not even so. Like once you get past the level of understanding belief, it it boils down to faith. Mm. You know, well, faith is belief, right? Mm. Right. It's belief it's, that's is what it is. Belief it's the is same thing. I can't articulate it, but I feel like faith is just a minor step further. Where it's like, okay, I'm giving up, and I have the trust in this belief that even though right now I feel very upset and very scared mm-hmm, and I'm stressed, mm-hmm. everything around me is on fire. Exactly. I have to trust that it is going to be okay. You know, absolutely. Faith. I, yeah. And I think that, I think I'm just kind of realizing through this conversation that I think maybe at least just for me, part of that key to, to not slipping into those doubtful thoughts and stuff is to be more active about it, be more proactive and like actively believe. Vigilant. Vigilant, yeah. That's so what when you have said, to be that vigilant. Actively believing is another term for walking your talk. Uh huh, yeah, okay. You have yeah, to walk yeah. your talk and you've got to do it every day. And you've got to do it consistently and you've got to commit to yourself to be able to do it. And when you go into work, and you see that negative person there, or you see a situation that it appears that it's not working out, that's all an illusion. That's to fake and make you go along with it, but it does not have any power over you until you buy it, Mm -hmm. until you buy into it, until Until you you play the game. Play the game, right? Exactly. If you go along with that, then you... I've just made that true. But Mm. if you look at it and going... They want to believe that this is a problem. Go ahead, believe that this is a problem. It's not a problem for me. I know I'm going to do fine. You're above it. You, you, you totally you know you're we've fine. got evidence of that every single day. The people who did not buy into all that negative stuff are the ones who are successful. That's I mean, true. why why would any of the spiritual leaders speak? Anybody, anybody, not just a spiritual leader, anybody who made any major changes, if they listened to the doubters. I mean, if they followed that, then we wouldn't have it. They were the ones that said, no, fuck you. I don't believe in that at all. Mm -hmm. I believe in what I believe. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing in my head, what I'm feeling in my heart, that's what I believe. And and by the way, I want to I want to share this. Um, I I use profanity purposely. Um, uh, <laughs> we be, love it, You're, right? You right, fit right. Because in. what I, spirituality isn't about the the special words that are said. It's about what how things are said. Okay, Mm. how things are said, the context in it. And if I say this is fucking great, you know, that that has I'm putting a punch to You're putting energy into it. It's not about being that's exactly why I do it as well, believe it or not. It's not about the word. It's not about being holy. 
No, no. it's, it's no. not about Hulk. Yeah, you know, I know pretending to be idea, perfect. Thou shalt and, not curse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that in one of the commandments <laughs> at either. all. It's just like fuck no. Yeah. I, matter of fact, I believe they said the fucking ten commandments. Okay, <laughs> it's just the like, ten motherfucking commandments. Fucking, yes, the ten motherfucking commandments. <laughs> right? This is like don't fuck your neighbor. Okay, <laughs> I think people would have listened. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Don't fucking steal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? They take don't, it a little more seriously. And, yeah, and and police and don't fucking kill mean don't fucking kill yeah. okay <laughs> nothing yeah. nobody don't fucking kill yeah. I, I think there would have been more people you're charging it with it. that energy definitely yeah. but no thou shalt not take a piss on statues it's <laughs> It's like thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt yeah, not it's so prim use and proper. the Lord's name in vain. I, you know, I had I was thirty years old before I figured that fucker out. It's just like, what does that mean? Don't use it in a name like I can't say goddamn. Right. It's just like, no, I thought using it in vain meant using God's name to condemn somebody. That's mm. using it in vain, mm -hmm. right? That's using, that's taking God as a power and using that to condone your negativeness. Yeah. That's using so it in vain. It's, it'd but, be like if you said to someone else, you said like, God damn you. You know, then you're, you're. Oh, yeah, damning you. Go right. ahead and damn right. you. That's using it in vain. Yeah. But go, oh, God damn it. You know, it's just like, shit, that just means you're from New York it's and probably Italian, too. Yeah. It's just exactly. an expression. Yeah. It's, it's an expression. Yeah. It has nothing. Oh, my God. People yeah, give too much power we get, to. Yes, we get you know, too much for sure. power. Yeah. But we were talking about manifesting, so I have to tell you this great story. I was story. just about Everybody to ask. To, okay, I put it on Facebook, and you might have some 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 of the viewers or listeners may have have seen this before. But um, so you know, I was a professional actor, and when I moved here, I was still acting at a regional theater in Raleigh. North Carolina Theater is one of the professional theaters there, and they would bring in you know Broadway people and local people to do shows. So I did a lot of their shows when I first moved here. That's awesome. But then I stopped. Okay. Sure, sure. Then then I got so involved in my work now as a psychic therapist and mm. spiritual teacher and a, a medium and an author now, right? Yeah. Of the secret that's holding you back. Yeah, <laughs> Amazon, uh, grab it. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. It comes in audio, ebook, and paperback. Yeah. Did <laughs> did you do the audiobook? Yes, of course. You I did. did. Oh, yes, come did on the now. Audio book. I got people listening to it, going, "Oh my God, I love your voices!" And I'm like, "Oh my God, I hated doing it. <laughs> I had fun. It was okay. That's it was awesome. okay doing it. But yeah, now you get to listen to my voice even more." <laughs> um, and so um, I stopped acting and I got into this full time, which I absolutely love. And I kind of feel like I do one man shows when I do live events because I'll sing at them also. I have seen him live. Oh, you? Did? It, oh, yeah, at George yeah, Norrie. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's where we met. It was right, like that's, oh, that's right. It, it was it there. was nothing what? short of like spiritual stand up. That it was right. Oh, exactly. it's hilarious. Spiritual yeah. stand up, right? That's what I love that. I love it's that really idea. like spiritual stand up, that's right? Awesome. Exactly. So I do that, but then I'm just recently I missed actually doing a musical because mm -hmm. that's what I used to do as musicals. So this is what I did, and this was back in. Um, the end of March. The end of March, I turned around and I go, universe, this is what I mean about controlling the universe and this law of attraction. Yeah, I'm curious you know? about this. And the God force, that's part of it. And yeah. I go, okay, listen, universe and God, I'm in the mood to do a musical. Bring one along that I can do. Okay. Come the first week of April, which is my birthday week, hey. okay, um, I receive a newsletter from one of the other local professional theaters that they're doing this season is Jersey Boys is the first show in, that they're doing for the season. Now, the reason why I love Jersey Boys is I actually was supposed to do it on Broadway, and one of the parts in it is a mafia boss. Oh, man. Okay, and I was being held to do a replacement in, on Broadway for a year. Mm. Um, eventually, I was brought back in and for the director to see me, and the director didn't like me. He didn't really? think I was subtle enough. He thought I was too Italian. He has no taste. All right. So, <laughs> so that was a disappointment. But now all of a sudden, this theater is doing Jersey Boys. So I'm like, this would be really cool. My daughter even called me up. She said, Dad, you're not going to believe this. The theater's doing Jersey Boys. you got to go and audition for it. I'm like, no, 
I can't audition oh. for it. I'm doing all of this stuff, and oh, there's no guarantee. And if I audition, oh, there and it they is. They don't hire me. Exactly. The negative thought. The negative thought came in right away. If they don't hire me, forget it. Then I really feel bad. Mm. You know, not doing it at all. And she said, "No, you should really try." And I'm like, "Oh, damn! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know." Okay. So a, a, a couple of weeks go by, and then all of a sudden. Um, I get the newsletter that they're having open calls. <laughs> and I'm like, I do not want to, I'm 68 years old, I do not want to go on an open call with all these young people to have to audition. That's a pain in the ass. So I go back to the universe again. And I say, universe, um, God, do me a favor. If I'm supposed to do this show, let them send me an invitation to do it. The Ooh. producer knows me. I happen to know the director. I did a show with him. He's actually the director. It was one of the four seasons in the Broadway show. So now he's doing the directing of this show. That's awesome. Right. And so I said, let me get an invitation. I get an invitation. Then that means I'm meant to do the show, and that's you telling me to do it. Okay. So, so I have my my phone in my hand you know i was sitting in the living room i was kind of watching tv and i had this conversation with the universe and god and um and i needed to check my email and so i go and i look at my email and new emails just came in and this top one is from this casting agency out of new york to vincent jenna i'm like um what the fuck is that it's like, <laughs> like but they went through this website called Actors Access, which I used to be a member of. Okay. It's the way actors get contacted by different casting agencies and producers and all other agents to come and do something, right? So, I, But I hadn't been on that for like 14 years. Whoa. I didn't even know what my fucking password was, right? <laughs> so, my, But meanwhile, I have to go to it in order to get the message from this casting Oh, agent. no. So I'm going, all right. So I'm going on Actors Access. I'm punching in all of these passwords of course they're not working reset your password shit, I, no but I, it wouldn't even work resetting it i couldn't reset it oh, it just happened to be somebody a live chat so i chat with the guy i said you got to get me into this site because i got a message from a casting agent so he resets my password i get in i open the damn thing and it says the production team of jersey boys would like to invite you to come do the part of Jip DiCarlo in the production if you are interested. Damn. How funny is that, that literally the obstacle wow. was placed in your path? To, to It's like being funny at you. You said, let them send me an invite. You had to work to open it. Yes, yeah, yeah. I had to work to open it. Yes. So, so it, it was so easy that it Are you appeared, paying attention? You know? But yeah. it's like, do you really mean it? Do you yeah. really want yeah. this? Because if you really want it, now you've got to, here's, I'm hanging it for you, but you still have to you gotta work go a little after more. it. You got to work a little bit more for it if you really want it. And it's always a tease that way. But there it was. It's an like invitation the- right after I said... <laughs> Send me an invitation. And it was the top one. It's not like I had to go through a whole bunch. It was the top one. And wow. I was like, that is unbelievable. So, of course, I went down. Now, not only did I get the part. Yeah. It was a three-week production. They only normally do two weeks. But Jersey Boys, they knew that it was going to be really popular. So they added an extra week of shows. Not only was it so much fun to do, but it turned out that the cast and the show was top notch. It, people were saying it was even better than the Broadway show. Oh wow. my goodness! And so it, it was like I did a Broadway show, and people were coming two and three times. We were sold out all the time. The reviews went incredible. The director gave me five parts to do, not just the main part of Jip De Carlo, but four other parts because he figured I could do it. It was even mentioned in the review how I did these five parts and each one incredibly different. Oh my Gosh. And on top. And that's what people... So I became popular because I did so many parts and did each one so, so good. I was even surprised over that. <laughs> but wow. it was get out of my way. See, I said, I don't care whether I do this or not. It would be nice. So there wasn't a great high bar, mm-hmm. right? And it was very easy for me... How arrogant is it to turn around and say, let them send me an invitation? But that showed a belief that I had. It did. Right? Yeah. A certain belief that I went, oh, no, they know me. But here's the, the, the caveat to that, too, is really interesting. The producer knew I wasn't acting anymore. You know, so he's just we taking friends, a shot in the dark. 
And yeah, I had thrown, I'd stopped it. She knew that. But out of the clear blue, both her and the director turned around and said, let's ask Vinny to do this part. No coincidence. And I get the part. That's weird. No, congratulations, so, by the way. You. That's incredible. It, I had such a blast on that. It actually made me miss Broadway, real Broadway. Oh. And I'm like, okay, all right, universe, let's, let's, as long as you did this one. <laughs> but what did I be. say? Now the bar is a little bit higher because I'm thinking Broadway. Oh, are they going to think I'm good enough for Broadway? And there's where you get stuck with that good enough feeling. Mm -hmm. And yes, replicate you're fucking good enough. Replicate that. You you know exactly. You had that that complete total confidence and belief that you would get that part. You got it exactly in the way that you asked for it. So we're just moving to the next step. Then I'm gonna throw that right at the both of you. The three yeah. of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In yeah. in how many weeks did it take before you got up to two hundred thousand followers? It in a short period of time, two hundred thousand. You got yeah, up you so views, views. Oh, views, views. views. I was you like, whoa. Got up, <laughs> yes, views. you got those views. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, Pretty super quick. I think within yeah. the first year. Yeah. Whoa, it's before the first year. Yeah, probably. Oh, two hundred thousand like total views. Yeah, yeah it was views. very yeah, early. Total on. views. It was a few so, okay, so there was evidence there for you to understand that all these people mm -hmm. were watching you. Why then would it be so difficult for you to think that there would be more? Why? Because you're going back to those numbers now. How many people are signing up? How many people mm -hmm. are subscribing? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that number may not be moving as fast. But it was really, oh, this is really cool. Look at this, all these views. Wow, this is great. Oh, I'm so excited about that. But all you have to do is carry that over. Oh, if we can get that many in the views, we can absolutely get that many in signing up. You have to have that kind of faith oh, without yeah. the proof. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The proof comes after the belief and the faith, mm. not before. I just kind of had a realization. They always say with manifestation, you're supposed to envision the feeling very vividly Yes. How how you should feel when you achieve what it is that you need. You know exactly. what I mean? Like that's that's a way that you're supposed to manifest is like, okay, let's say someone's trying to manifest a lot of money and it would be something to the effect of like vividly trying to imagine what it would feel like to hold the check in your hand, you know, and like, yeah. oh man, I'm so happy. Feel Absolutely it. to but feel it. I just kind of realized that my problem is is I've I've never in my life really felt that positive feeling about what I'm trying to achieve because mm -hmm. it's not every okay. it's not every lifetime that you know when you're not to boohoo but when you're a teenager All right. you're full of shit your dad goes <laughs> let me tell you why you're full of shit okay tell me you think you're the dumbest around you think you're the dumbest around or do you think you're pretty smart I don't think I'm the dumbest around but you think you're pretty smart you got a lot of knowledge inside of you don't you Yes. You know uh, that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just agreeing with you. These are. Oh, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> you agree. You can say this. You're you saying. Know, yeah. abso you're smart. Absolutely. You've got all of this wisdom. You've got, and more than most, your age. Would you agree to that? I would agree to that. Okay. So why is it so difficult to believe that you're that special mm. to be able to make more happen in your life for you? If you, if you already have evidence Okay, that you're not a dumbass. You cared enough to gain all of this wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So why can't you go further with that to understand that was for a reason? That must mean something about me. I I do believe that logically, but I think there's like an energetic blockage there. You know, like being 15 years old, the Discovery Channel came out and we were laughed and mocked and absolutely well, you crazy were being told and by everybody else. Literally, so many external voices saying you're crazy, you're dealing with the devil. I got you're, that. You're, and and now you know the History Channel episode with us is about to come out in a few weeks, and I'm just like, oh my god, I feel like I'm 15 again. What if it happens again? You know, oh, really? no, and it's even, coming no, back. Just the reverse that is yes. going to yeah. happen. Okay. First of all, all of the people. I don't have like, that model. I don't have that positive model. But you also you don't know? have the negative model. You have the negative model from negative people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Negative and negative becomes positive. What happens? Do you remember your math? Negative times negative? <laughs> positive. It's positive. 
So you have negative voices, negative treatment from negative people, which c- completely negates means all of that. It means absolutely nothing. Yeah. But you're you're wanting to buy into those negative people just like I wanted to buy into my negative mother. My mother mm-hmm. had absolutely no esteem whatsoever about herself. And any time I said I wanted to be an actor, it's like nothing comes from the Jennas anyway. Why do you think you're so special? Mm. And so that's the voice I hear Mm -hmm. when I'm doing my work and I want to go high with it. Now, I've been able to get pretty far so far, but I'm still not at the level that I want to be at and being out there. But that extra level, those extra numbers that you want requires such a deep, deep belief in how good we are to get that. Why not you? Why not the both of you? What, what, why do you think somebody else, why do you think Logan Paul is a, this was in class one. He's a great guy, mm-hmm. but he acts like an idiot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay? But he took the risk to believe. He, the, the reason why he is so successful is because he was too stupid to think he was stupid. And then he was like, <laughs> he was just going to believe whatever he did. Everybody was going to love it. And he was absolutely right. Yeah, And if you think about it, it's like, what's the worst thing that can come from you believing in yourself like that? Yeah. What? And I'm talking to myself, too. I'm I can tell you the you. worst thing. I'm, what, what is it? The worst thing is your belief and the fear that it doesn't come. Now you realize you were wrong about yourself. Mm. And if you realize you're wrong about yourself, then the only conclusion you come to is, well, I'm not so special. I'm not so smart. I'm not so good. Mm. So then what is it about finding the right balance of believing in yourself then? Because There's no balance. It's either, it's either or. Yeah. There is no, there's no gray shade. Yeah. You're either believing in yourself or you're not. Well, that's what in that's what I mean. Like, what what could what bad could come from you in just believing in yourself to the fullest? That's what I'm. That's what I'm really no saying. No bad can come. From yeah, it. exactly. Only, it's, only good can come from it. But again, like I said, is people fear. That most people feel their specialness as soul. They really do. Even the people with no talent, no skills, no, you ask anybody, and this is what scares everybody else, because you look at somebody who's not producing anything major, not, not a star. You, you look at the guys and the girls who are auditioning for American Idol and think they're the greatest singers around, right? And they think they're special, but they're really not. And now you're looking at them and you're going, wait a minute, I think I'm special. Right. Right. I think I'm really talented. What makes me more talented than them? Mm. Here's the difference. Sustenance. Sustenance. Your belief is true if you have sustenance to prove it behind it. Those people who believe that they're great singers never had the sustenance of being a great singer. They never had it. They're actually latching on to that belief to counter how bad they feel about themselves. Mm. So it's that narcissism idea. Narcissists truly do not believe they're great. They absolutely believe they're the biggest shits on the planet, but their defense mechanisms counter that and their brain purposely creates grandiose ideas about themselves themselves to counter that low self-esteem that they have. Otherwise, they would never survive. So the difference is sustenance. You have sustenance. You've got content. You've got proof already that what you have to say and do is real, is real. So therefore, your feelings about yourselves and your feelings about this show have to be real. And here's the other part. That's deep. That's so deep. The way that you just yeah. related it to like narcissism and that personality disorder and like that that was like a map for me. I almost like I I, I understand that fully now. Is you've got you've got you've got to believe it. And, and and here's the other part that you need to believe along with it. You wouldn't have this feeling and the sustenance if it didn't happen already. Mm. So you're thinking you might have to explain cre- that one. Yeah, you're thinking you're creating something new. Mm-hmm. You're not. You're tapping into what you already created. It's predestined. When? It's, it's, it's like already. before lives? Before you, before you came down and incarnated in this world, you put out into the universe, into a dimension, your plan. Right. See, if we're, if we're needing to experience who we are, then it isn't about anything we create that needs to prove that. What proves who we are 
is the ability to create, not mm-hmm. what we've created. Mm-hmm. Okay? Nothing like sending a rocket to the moon wasn't the important part. But the belief that we could, oh, my God, look at how far we were able to go. Yeah. So who gives a shit now that it landed on the moon? We right. know we can do that. So it's now, now that's nothing. Now we want to go to Mars, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so the idea is then, and, and all of you luminaries knew this, all right? And they expressed it to each other. When Wilbur Wright woke up and said to his brother one day, you're not going to believe this. We need to make a vehicle because I just saw a picture in my head of a vehicle going through the air carrying people in it. <laughs> and Orville said, oh, my God, you're nuts. What, what <laughs> yeah. did you take last night? Yeah. And this was before gummies, okay, yeah, before true. any of you that had a dream stuff. about the plane. Oh, right. is that real? Yes. yes, it is. Real. He had a dream about the plane. In and his brother was, to, was wanting to talk him out of it, and he said, no, you don't understand. If I dreamt it, that means it's real. Yeah. <laughs> um, Plato, I said this, and I said this before, is Plato came out with the concept of forms. And his theory was, if you can make this couch, it's because the form of it exists in a dimension somewhere, yeah. and you're just tapping into it. So you guys making Bledsoe said so into this famous, you know, monetize, and you're going to live off of this, that's nothing. Yeah. That's not your job. Right. Your job is believing you can. And that it already exists. So by your believing in it, you'll manifest it right into existence. That's the work. But it's the belief that makes you go, oh, now I know who I am and who we are. Look at what we were able to create. Great. You know, and quite honestly, you may reach the pinnacle that you want to reach. And the next day, the world ends. (laughs) Yeah. And you you will have still been totally successful. Yeah. Honestly, that is so profound. Like I, I, and, and, you know, like all the, all the monetization stuff is great. And like, we'd be lying to you if we told you like at a certain point, we can't evolve the show without, you know, being able to live on it and mm-hmm. abandon the old ways of our lives and make move here. But my, my whole thing is I just want to awaken as many people as possible. Mm. You know, I want to help people awaken. And that's why I wanted to do this. After they pushed me to do this, you know, I started to see it more clearly. Like, wow, we could really reach people. And it's just, it's, to me, it's like documenting the awakening. You know, well, ab- like, a, like a meta documentary. The whole thing, the whole time. That's been my whole imaginary vision of this. Is it's yeah. like documenting the awakening. Intention is actually what gives power to it even more so. When your intention is that pure, mm-hmm. okay, then there's absolutely nothing stopping you. I can tell you without a doubt, this team has never had a single like vain conversation of being like, man, I want to make a bunch of money. With the, no, you know, no, no. it's not about, it's no. never, never been about that for us. The, the monetary part is simply so that we can do it more and do it better. Yeah. That's right. Like, it's a that, necessity. That, Absolutely. Yeah, that's all we care about. Like, and, and sure it'll support us, uh, you know, so that we don't have to have some other job. That's cool. But, I mean, we just we just want to. This is our baby. We we just want this to be right. as good as it can be. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I, th- and, I feel. Uh, and the whole idea of wanting to awaken people is because apparently you already have, which is the reason why the desire is inside there. You're just thinking it's a new desire. It's not. It's an old desire. It's been part of your plan. You didn't go to school and you didn't pick up all the books and learn all that you learned just so that you can pack it in here for yourself. Right. You're spilling it out all over the place in this podcast. And the two of you didn't hook up with your interest and your abilities and having this conversation just so that you can play fun with you know yeah. all of the microphones and everything yeah. you are doing this to awaken people and you've already been making it happen so the more you believe in the success of it that it's out there like i want to speak in front of eighty thousand people i mm-hmm. see myself standing on a stage in an arena with eighty thousand people making them feel their godness and seeing that auditorium that's that stadium go crazy in them finally realizing who they are that's what i'm seeing about wow. me imagine the energy in that room well t- absolutely this is what i want oh, oh my but, god oh man but i think you kind of are doing that Oh, you're... already. Well, I, 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 
Yes, yes, I am. And I'm not going to deny that. I'm very, I feel very blessed by that. I feel, and this is what's really important, and everybody needs to understand this. I feel so good that I am doing it right. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm doing it the rightest way. I know that there's more that I can do to make it better, and I'm always working towards that. But damn it, I like what I'm doing. Do you like what you fuckers are doing? Oh, yes. hell do yeah. Do you think you guys are great Absolutely. at doing You are pissers. You, you, make, you, <laughs> you, you bring out the best in some jerk like me that's coming Aww, in here, this Italian nice. New Yorker. <laughs> Absolutely. And this guy hiding behind over here, I mean, he puts it all together, and yep. he doesn't realize his energy is just as important oh, as bringing out percent. your energy and I hope he does realize that we couldn't and do it without yes, you Alex we could not do, do it without, without you we him. definitely realize that so yeah. you've, you, you've got to appreciate that and go walking away going damn I am reaching people this feels great and everybody needs to do that our problem is not that our egos are over inflated our problem is we have no egos mm. because they've been thwarted and taken away and beaten down by every single negative out there and every single day and every time you go to work your ego is being thrashed mm. because of all the other shit that they're doing and what the other people are doing that's wrong and what you're not liking about mm. your work and all this shit is uh, and with just <laughs> that is not inflating our egos this is what's meant to make you feel Oh, who yeah. you really are. I'm waking up people and I love that I'm doing that I love that I love people OK, yeah. I love that I can love. I just went to see my fr the guy who did Frankie Valley in the show that I did. Oh, he nice. just went down to Hilton Head um, and did it at, at a theater there. And we drove. We drove. My wife and I drove five hours to see him to support him because I love the guy. He's, he's wonderful. That's awesome. And I love that about me. Yeah. And you guys have to love that and, and how you make people like me feel how you feel. And this is everybody needs to feel that for themselves and about themselves. Well, it's important. It's really important. Like life is so hard to get through sometimes. Like you have days where you're just like nothing I'm doing is working. I feel like I'm completely incompetent. Yes. There's there are few things in this life more important than believing in yourself. I, I really believe there's that. nothing yeah. that's the, and, the most important thing because you can't make anything happen in life, mm -hmm. neither for you nor anybody else in your life, unless you believe in yourself first. It's just like what the, the flight attendant says on the airplane. The seat belt. Is not just a seatbelt. When the oxygen mask comes down, oh, that's what I mean. Put it on your fucking face <laughs> right. first before you put it on your baby's face. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be dead <laughs> and won't be able to. So it always starts with you. Right. Yeah. And we're being taught too many times by too many so-called religious and spiritual concepts and philosophies out there that selflessness and not thinking about you is what we're supposed to do. Service to others only. Fuck that. Yeah, mm -hmm. not only just maybe like 5149. No, it starts with you 100% because we're unlimited. So that means we have 200%. Hmm. So 100% for me as I take care of myself, and then I have 100% for you as well. Damn. Yeah, I like that. You got to fill your cup. I like that. You got to fill your cup before you can fill other people's But what he's, saying, what he's saying is your cup is limitless. That's right. You can pour everything into yourself and pour and everything. Pour it into, and when you believe that, that's when you get the energy. People ask me all the time, like when I'm doing all my readings, aren't you exhausted? Aren't you tired? Are you going to do as good of a reading for me? I'm like, are you <laughs> kidding me? I am completely energized because of all the work I just did. Yeah. So yes, you're going to get a great reading. You know, I'm uh, completely energized. Kobe Bryant had a quote that was almost exactly like that. People were warning him about putting too many eggs in one basket or whatever. Like, well, what are you going to do if you put all your eggs into this one basket and then it doesn't pan out? And he said, I'm going to get more eggs. You're limitless. Absolutely. You're limitless. You're going to get more eggs. You, well, yeah. for God's sakes, doesn't the government show that every day? They <laughs> run out of money. What do they do? Get more. They print more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's just an example. It's, it, it seems like, well, that's going to get us in trouble eventually. It seems that way, but no, it's not. It's only going to get us in trouble when we want it to get us in trouble. <laughs> and we are completely limitless, really. I love that. And yeah. so, I've never and heard it's, that. But it's our belief in our limitedness that has caused all the problems because that's why we want to protect ourselves, mm. protect our belongings. I don't want you taking them. I don't want you stealing them. 
But that's why it was said, if a, if a thief comes along and steals your shoes, give him your cloak as well. Mm. You'll get another one. Yeah, you it's know, all good. You'll, you'll yeah. get it. You'll get it. So all of this to make you believe more and go after your dreams. And you guys out there, believe in more and go after your dreams. And when you believe, your dreams will surface because that's the other thing. People always ask me, well, I don't know what my dreams are. Mm. Yes, you do. You came in with a shitload of them. <laughs> You've forgotten them because you don't believe you can attain them. And it's easier to leave this life with the thought of oh i never knew what my dreams were mm. rather than the thought of oh i knew what my dreams were but i was a chicken shit to go after them yeah that's harder oh yeah so the defense mechanism will turn off the dream to protect you again oh that's so true it is true oh i i mean i have i, I have been that person and i i have people in my life that are, are like that and i just you, so you just tell them you got to believe anyway. You got to start with believing in yourself first, and that stuff will reveal itself through time. And keep on believing in yourself. Don't back up on the believing in yourself because then after you find out what the dream is, then you'll start seeing it come true. Absolutely. That's and beautiful. You know, why is it that I feel all the time when we are doing this show and we're ending this show that I've had the greatest joint <laughs> of my life. Why do I feel that? The, it's just like right. It's just like this incredible high. It's the energy. We're we're uh and it's not and without pass, anything. Pass that, pass yeah. that, pass yeah. <laughs> Down to the little roach there. Oh I'm God. telling you, yes. This that it's actually the reason why people did drugs to come to these kinds of understandings. Mm -hmm. Right? Where oh, we, yeah. We've done that and that actualization without having to do any of the drugs, right? Well, you know, you know, there a really you know. funny thing is a lot of these like spiritual gurus and leaders and enlightened people, they, um, like there's examples of, uh, you know, Terrence McKenna, he was like a big, like into oh, psychedelics. Yes, and, yes. Yeah, so he, he gave an enlightened guru acid. Like the guy was willing, the guru was willing to take it, it whatever. Neem Karoli Baba, right? Yeah, Neem Karoli Baba. Wow. It had zero effect on him. It, oh, it he had tricked no him. Effect. Remember? Right, he, he tricked him. Yeah, he took it and he started going, oh, like he was freaking out or something. And then he's like, I'm just, just kidding. It, it's not doing anything. It's not doing him. anything. He, right, because he'd been tripping without it. Exactly. Because he was able to get to that level. That's Absolutely. that feeling. That's that. Absolutely. Yeah, that Absolutely. tingly feeling. So here we are. And at the end, my gosh. The only thing, we don't have a time limit. We, we don't. We keep going we don't. forever, but as long as you... reasonably. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Th this, this has been the absolute coolest. We got to have you back a million more times. Well, oh, I love You know I love being here. Yeah. <laughs> Your relationship You're always welcome. is going to continue. Yeah. You know, like we, we love I having love you it. on. And I'm not kidding. Nick's not kidding. Alex's not kidding. We've been telling you this the whole time you've been here. Yes. You are one of our very most requested repeat guests. Oh, yeah. Probably the most. Well, thank you. You guys and you listeners out there, thank you. And, and you know what they should do? Yeah. They should be writing in questions that they want to have answered. And to you. To, well, to you guys mm -hmm. on the show, for just in general, first of all, what to give you topics, but also for me to answer when I do come back. What do you think? That would be great. We already do that. And it's called What If? And we can have Vincent on a What If? I think that would be really awesome. I think it might be even cooler since you have so many people in our audience that love you so much. I think it would be cool to do an extra special what if where people write him questions right. specifically. Right. That right. would questions. be, yeah, that yeah. Would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. I want to know what you want to know. I don't want to just speak my shit. I mean, you no, know, this what has do you want to know that's going to help you? Like, oh, this has been fantastic. But that is, that's like a next level idea. So next time, I it'll you. take some planning. But we'll, we'll coordinate yeah. it. You just right. got to walk in and answer. Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, God, if I don't have to think. But then again, most of my talking, I don't think I think anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's what my wife is always telling me. Do you ever fucking think about what you're saying? It's just like, no, because if I did, I wouldn't say it. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, there. For sure. Oh, but wow. thank you guys. I, it's I our just pleasure. love you. I just, I'm, I'm filled with your energy. My heart is filled with everything that's going on for you guys and, and your success. You really are amazing. And, and Bledsoe said so is just on the tip of everybody's tongues out there. We're going to make it even more so. You know? Oh, well, it's just, thank it's, you. It's great. The feeling is this mutual. Is we love you. We love having you here. And uh, you remember how we end the episodes? Hold Bye on. Guys. Hold the thought. Oh, okay. Where, where, for everybody listening out there, where can they find you where you oh, need them yes. to go? 
All right. You can just go to vincentjenna.com. That's with a G-E-N-N-A. You can connect with me. You can go to my podcast, The Jenna Effect, from there. Um, you can go to amazon.com. Now, listen, people have been calling me and, and setting appointments up after they read that book because it is transforming their lives. Mm. It, it includes the work you need to manifest all your dreams. And so that's the secret that's holding you back. So go to vincentjenna.com. Go to amazon.com. And then come to facebook.com. Com. Shit, you come to any dot com to find me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Hell we love yeah. you. You're amazing. And um, just so thankful you joined us today. And yeah, so we end all saying bye, guys. It's cheesy, but it's like a little ritual of ours. So on the count of three, we're going to say bye, guys. Ready? Three, two, one. Bye, bye guys. guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.